guys, thanks for inviting me to your lab. And as I said, like I walked in here, this is like the Vegas of labs. I feel the lights are going, the sounds are going, there's a lot of action here. And we just talked about the x-ray machine behind us. Tell us where we are and what you do in this department. You go ahead. We're in the Department of Biochemistry here at McGill. And the Department of Biochemistry, there's a lot of different things. We're at the center of the structural biology part of the uh, department, and we look at what enzymes are doing in the cells by getting very good images of them doing what they do at resolutions and at magnifications that you can't do with a microscope or with your eye, and we need these special uh, pieces of equipment like the one behind us, this x-ray generator. Amazing, amazing. Tell us what your name is and what you do uh, in the department. Okay, my name is Albert Berkner, I'm a professor here, but I'm also chair of the department. Uh, what do I do? I use some of these equipments really to figure out what is the chemistry behind life. What happens, what makes life really life, and how is the chemistry makes that happen? I, I, it sounds almost like a title to a great book, What Makes Life Life? So let's talk about that really quickly. I know we can spend days on this, but what what does make life life? What is what are the components, and what are, what is the research that we're doing going to contribute to that life? So life is the essence of life is from from a chemistry point of view is replication, being able to duplicate yourself. Understanding that process is very fundamental, and it's for instance very fundamental in understanding things like cancer. Sure where the duplication is not faithful. Absolutely. Errors happen. So if you understand how life happens at this chemistry level, you might understand how cancer, what does cancer do at this level. And understanding that is a first step in trying to find cures for diseases. Sure. And when we talk about uh, errors and so forth, it's uh, easy to make an analogy to when we're writing down a script or writing down uh, something that we are going to have to look up later. But the, what's really happening is an enzyme is making a mistake. It's meant to put one chemical someplace, but it puts a different chemical that place. And so this is the chemistry of life. And so that kind of chemical errors lead to disorder and disease. So you know, I've heard a lot as I, as I toured all different departments, I'm learning about different things that are moving, that are really the impetus behind the research and the motivation of a life's work. Things like life expectancy being you know, really kind of you know, longer than it's ever been uh, has sparked a lot of interest in Alzheimer's prevention. Yep. What's driving this department? A lot of things, but uh, something that uh, Albert and I both have in common is um, study into antibiotics. And so but antibiotics is one of the main reasons that we do have longer lifespans. Uh, because back in the day, if you had an ear infection, you might just die from it. And now we go to the pharmacy and get something that's uh, able to be put in the ear and stop the infection straight off. Like like banana medicine, like we were trying. I've never heard of banana medicine. <laughs> uh, Amoxicillin, they, I think. They yes, yes. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> and so uh, all of these different antibiotics are made by uh, bacteria or fungi and we just um, grab them and sometimes make them better or sometimes just make uh, the bacteria make exactly what they're doing uh, in nature and put it in pill form and give it to you or you. And um, Albert studies the resistance that the uh, bacteria builds up against these and I study uh, some of the ways that we can um, make uh, these antibiotics. What's the, what's the biggest thing today that's driving the next generation of biochemists in terms of research and, and philosophies? So it's really our understanding of what happens at this really fundamental atomic chemistry level gives us new insights into all the diseases. Sure. May that be resistance to antibiotics, may that be Alzheimer's, may that be cancer, may that be multiple sclerosis, mm -hmm. any of those diseases. If you drill down to it, it's some chemistry that is changing. Yes. Yes. And we have now the tools, like this machine, sure. to really drill down to what is actually happening. You know, if you go back 50 years ago, you had a fever. Why? What? No clue. Sure. Now we can drill down to literally almost the atom and see what makes somebody sick. Probably. There's a mutation that might have happened. There's two or three atoms that are stripped out for something else and causes massive changes. 
we now have this these know-how, this technology to figure that out. And that is, of course, the first key sure. to addressing something. And I think we're, we're so lucky to have these kinds of resources yeah. uh, right here, you know, right here in Montreal. So thank you for inviting me into your lab and your philosophy. And we'll get back into the, what makes life life a little later. Okay. Well, thank you for having me. Good. We'll be back. Uh, we'll be back for chapter two real soon. Yeah.